Hello everybody, welcome along and thanks for watching. This is going to be another one of those videos where I talk you through the different slides, get you to pause and do the work and then keep going and hopefully that will give you a little bit more guidance sort of in place of a live lesson. So here we go then, consider what you've always been told to do in this situation and this is leading somewhere with my lesson. So the situation of an alarm bell starts ringing, it's clearly a fire alarm. What are you always told to do? There are certain things that you're told to do just give you five seconds, literally just to think, and then I'll tell. It's all about remaining calm, isn't it? But it's also about exiting the building by the nearest fire exit. And there is a reason why we're talking about this today. So moving on then, um, what about if there's a fire in a block of flats where you're living? What would you do? If you're, I don't know, six, seven, 10, 12, 15 floors up, and there's a fire down below, what would you do? How would you feel? And those are, consider are questions to consider for today. Now, what I've got is, and that note is more for the people who are doing this not live or not with me now. I'm going to go through this, and obviously this isn't going to work as quite as well as it would be if you were interacting with me. But I'm just going to go through and see if you can work out what this is, where this is, and when this is. So I'm just going to do some reveals. And maybe just give a little bit of narration, like beautiful blue sky, looks like maybe sunset or sunrise possibly a city of some sort, definitely looking like a city, it's looking very built up, very urban as an environment. Okay, so quite modern architecture, maybe contrasting the background, and look, you've actually got uh, the brown houses there almost potentially looking like social, ha social housing, very much crammed in together, unlike the very modern thing that you see in the bottom left. Again, more idea, there's quite a broad city landscape going on here, again, very densely populated, perhaps you could say leaving us with our final three reveals. Interesting to see whether you would under would have known what this is that I'm showing you. That's the first one there. Look at the detail at the very bottom. Then I got the detail at the very top. Finally, this, which some of you may have worked already, especially if you've seen the detail, but that, an absolutely horrible, uh, tragic sight to see as well. And for some of you will know that this refers to the Grenfell Tower. Um, it was a block, I think it's maybe 22, 23 stories uh, high, which caught fire somewhere near the bottom. Um, and people were told to remain in their flats. They're, they said that there was fire protection, which would uh, keep them safe until the fire brigade were able to reach them. Um, but as became very obvious that those who did uh, did not survive and they well I'll tell you more about why in a minute what I want you to do is this is task number one where you're going to do your first bit of writing for me uh, Grenfell would make a really good title for your work today please could you watch the video there and bullet point down the key facts you learn about the tragedy so I'm giving you 10 minutes the video is about five but 10 minutes to click on that and you'll find the link on the show my homework slide because obviously it won't work through the YouTube channel um, and yeah, I'll go quiet for five seconds to allow you to pause this video and open up that one and do your bullet points, please. Off you go. Okay, so hopefully that fills you in with the picture a little bit. That's what you'll need to understand. That was the reporting at the time. Obviously, since then, uh, more information came to light about how many people were involved and so forth. So Grenfell was it. The tra word tragedy is the best one, but it was later. It was later sort of discovered really that it was the cladding. So older buildings like that, which are which are pretty terrible with their insulation. Um, the best, in, well, what was considered best was to put cladding on the outside to try and keep the heat in. But this cladding basically did not meet fire protection standards. Um, air got there, were, there was air between it and and so forth. So basically, you can see the building almost on fire on the outside in that top left photo, um, and it caused an absolute uproar because the types of people who were living in in it, it was social housing. So they were in some way seen as less important because these are people who are you might call them council houses. Um, they are they are given these houses and given a bit of support to live in these places, but it were they were made up predominantly of poorer. Uh, and less well-off people. I'm trying to choose my words really carefully here. Um, but yeah, it was an absolute tragedy. Bottom left, the community rallied round because lots of people were left. There were hundreds of people left homeless, those who did manage to get out. Um, but it was a real, real tragedy. Um, and then it led to the idea of like the Grenfell symbol you've seen up there. The green heart became very much a symbol of it as well. So I'm just going to say... Pause this for 10 seconds, just so you can actually scan down through that yourself. And I'm going to go quiet now for five seconds just to allow you to read that.
and it's it's absolutely shocking but the cladding and the insulation on the outside failing is is the key thing there are actual criminal investigations going in now to see who is at fault this however uh, we are a few years on now and yet still nobody has been brought to justice nobody has been held accountable for what happened there and that is what makes some people very very angry it's still bubbling away in the news just uh, just earlier this week in fact I saw another news article still talking about the fact of trying to bring people to justice the government seems to be dragging their heels to use an expression and because it's going to be a very expensive thing because there are many 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 other buildings like this residential buildings which have been cheaply clad to try and make them more uh, insulated anyway just another another sort of indication really for you of just what it looked like before on the left and then the fire and the aftermath uh, with the cladding on the left there as well um, like I said, I'll explain this in the video, but why are these people protesting? Well, these people are deeply, deeply unhappy that um, there is there is no justice, seemingly, that there are 72 people who are now dead, um, and they shouldn't have been, and the many residents had been raising the, the problems with fire safety in this building and were being ignored. The other thing to be aware of is Grenfell Tower uh, sits in one of the richest areas in the country. Chelsea and Kensington Borough is part of London and Chelsea and Kensington is made up of multi-million uh, pound houses and yet with the social housing these people weren't being listened to, almost being ignored by the people in charge. It caused a massive, massive uproar um, and there was lots of very angry protesting as well and obviously lots of very peaceful protesting but understandably people were deeply deeply upset and angry by what they saw as the injustice that nobody was listening to them and it still feels like that to some extent as well the fact that still nobody has been held responsible for that fire that you saw there and by responsible not for starting the fire but for the building being clad in unsafe materials which actually then caused people to lose their lives and it shouldn't have been clad in that there should have been fire safety standards that were met and they weren't so I move on. Here are two poems which both come from the event. So I want the question I'm going to ask you to answer for me is the one at the top there. Why are these two poems so different? I'm looking for two or three sentences really which make you consider. The Grenfell Tower by Ben Ockrey there, the guy in the top right, he is, that one is in your anthology so you could follow along with that one because you will be annotating that for me very shortly. So if you wanted to do that whilst you watch it, that would be absolutely fine. Beneath that, the link there to the BBC uh, website has a firefighter and their response to it as well. So you're going to want to pause this video. It's going to take you about 10 minutes to watch them both and then write me your response, please. So I'm going to go quiet now. Okay, thank you. I think perspective has to be there. You've got somebody, Ben Ockrey there, who's looking from the outside, but maybe feels a real connection to these people who have gone through such a tragedy, whereas the firefighter has that first-hand account and has the horrifying experiences and memories which they've got to live with. So, finally then, this is task number three for me. I'm looking at about 15 minutes here. Annotating your copy of Ben Ockrey's poem is what I'm looking for today, but more specifically, Year 9, I want to see you explaining the effect of at least three lines in that poem, please. That's an absolute minimum. I'm not asking for a P-E-A-R paragraph here, but I am asking for a decent, uh, a decent response from you. So as I've said there, annotating at least three lines or words and the connotations of those. But I'm not looking for a, a quick, see how little I can do here. This is your main activity, so take your time. That will be about reading it again and then annotating. That gives you at least three or four minutes per annotation. So have a good go. If there's any problems, you can always email, of course. Um, but thanks. I hope this has opened your eyes maybe to something which you maybe weren't aware of before um, and a deep tragedy within this country. So thanks very much for watching, and I look forward to seeing your work later. Bye-bye for now.